Folks, this is part seven of our Azure Solutions Architect Expert exam practice question series. And we are starting with question number 43 in this part. You have an on-premise network that uses an IP address space of 172.16.0.0 with a prefix of 16. You plan to deploy 30 virtual machines to a new Azure subscription. You identify the following technical requirements. All Azure virtual machines must be placed on the same subnet named subnet one. All the Azure virtual machines must be able to communicate with all on-premise servers. The servers must be able to communicate between the on-premise network and Azure by using a site-to-site -site VPN. You need to recommend a subnet design that meets the technical requirements. What should you include in the recommendation? Now to answer, you need to select the appropriate network address to the correct subnets. Each network address may be used once, more than once, or not at all. And the network addresses are 172.16.0.0 with the prefix length of 16, 172.16.1.0 with the prefix length of 27, 192.168.0.0 with a prefix length of 24 and 192.168.1.0 with a prefix length of 27. You need to tell which network address should be used for subnet 1 and gateway subnet. Folks, you don't really need in-depth networking knowledge to answer such type of questions. First key thing you need to take into consideration while answering this question is you cannot have overlapping IP addresses between on-premise and Azure virtual machines. So you can rule out both network IP addresses containing 172.16 in it as that would overlap with on-premise address range of 172.16.0.0 with the prefix length of 16. Now you need to deploy a total of 30 virtual machines and the first remaining CIDR range with prefix of 24 will have 256 IP addresses and second one will have 32 IP addresses. Now friends, remember Azure reserves five IP addresses in each range for internal purposes, which leaves us with only 27 IP addresses in the CIDR with 27 prefix. That means the correct answer for subnet will be 192.168.0.0 with a prefix of 24. Now friends, the gateway subnet would be 192.168.1.0 with a prefix of 27. Because it ensures that the gateway subnet is separate from the Azure VM subnet, which is subnet one, and also does not overlap with the on-premise IP address space. Next question. You are designing an application that will use Azure virtual machines to analyze video files. The files will be uploaded from corporate offices that connect to Azure by using express route. You plan to provision an Azure storage account to host the files. You need to ensure that the storage account meets the following requirements. Supports video files of up to seven terabyte, provides the highest availability possible, ensures that storage is optimized for the large video files, ensures that files from the on-premise network are uploaded by using express route. How should you configure the storage account? And the first part of the question focuses on choosing the storage account type. Your options are premium file shares, premium page blobs, standard general purpose version two. Now friends, whenever you want to store video files, then always look for block blobs and the two storage that support block blobs are premium page blobs and standard general purpose V2. Now friends, question specifically focuses on providing the highest availability possible. So you will have to go with general purpose V2 storage as premium page blobs do not support GRS. And the next part of the question talks about the type of data redundancy that you'll have to choose. Your options are zone redundant storage, 
locally redundant storage and geo redundant storage now folks following on from the previous explanation redundancy type you will choose here is geo redundant storage as it offers the highest availability and durability by replicating data to a secondary region now the final part of the question talks about networking your options are a geo route server a private endpoint a service endpoint and folks, you will have to choose a private endpoint here as it ensures secure and direct connectivity to the storage account over express route. Let's understand why other options are incorrect. Now, Azure route server is primarily designed to facilitate dynamic routing between the virtual network appliances and virtual networks. It makes integration easier for network virtual appliances such as firewalls or routers by using the border gateway protocol. Service endpoints extend your BNET's private address space to Azure services over Microsoft's backbone, thereby providing secure access. They enable you to use your virtual network's private IP to connect to Azure services like Azure Storage, Service endpoints ensure traffic to Azure services goes over Microsoft backbone, but do not guarantee integration with Express Route. They will route traffic over the internet unless there is a specific Express Route integration defined. Let's look at question number 45. You have 100 Microsoft SQL Server integration services, which is SSIS packages that are configured to use 10 on-premise SQL Server databases as their destination. You plan to migrate the 10 on-premise databases to Azure SQL database. You need to recommend a solution to create Azure SQL Server integration services packages. The solution must ensure that the packages can target the SQL database instances as their destinations. What should you include in the recommendation? Your options are Data Migration Assistant, Azure Data Catalog, SQL Server Migration Assistant, Azure Data Factory. Folks, DMA is primarily used to assess and migrate on-premise database to Azure SQL databases or SQL Server in Azure VMs. It does not handle SSIS package migration or execution, so an incorrect choice. Now, the next one is Azure Data Catalog, which is a metadata management tool that helps organizations to register, discover, and understand data sources and in no way execute or manage SSIS packages, so another incorrect option. Now, SQL Server Migration Assistant is typically used to migrate data from other databases, which is like Oracle, MySQL to SQL Server or Azure SQL database. It's again not designed to migrate or execute SSIS packages which leaves us with the fourth and final option that is the correct choice here. Azure Data Factory provides Azure SSIS integration runtime that allows you to lift and shift your existing SSIS packages to Azure. You can run your SSIS packages in the cloud with minimal changes, allowing them to target Azure SQL database instance as destinations. Now refer to the link on your screen to understand more about this. Next question. You have a Microsoft Entra tenant that syncs with an on-premise Active Directory domain. Your company has a line of business application that was developed internally. You need to implement SAML single sign-on and enforce multi-factor authentication when users attempt to access the application from an unknown location. Which two features should you include in the solution? Your options are Microsoft Entra Privileged Identity Management, Azure Application Gateway, Microsoft Entra Enterprise Applications, Microsoft Entra ID Protection, Conditional Access Policies. Folks, you should use the combination of Entra Enterprise Applications and Conditional Access Policies to implement the given requirement. Now, Microsoft Entra Enterprise Applications is used to configure single sign-on for SaaS and custom applications, including those using SAML for authentication. 
And conditional access policies allow you to enforce conditions such as requiring multi-factor authentication when accessing resources. You can define a policy to enforce MFA when users are accessing the application from an unknown or untrusted location, ensuring higher security. Question number 47. You have an Azure subscription. You need to recommend a solution to provide developers with the ability to provision Azure virtual machines. The solution must meet the following requirements. Only allow the creation of the virtual machines in specific regions. Only allow the creation of specific sizes of virtual machines. What should you include in the recommendation? Your options are attribute-based access control, Azure policy, conditional access policies, role-based access control. Folks, this is one of the easiest questions from AZ305 exam perspective as anyone who knows the basic of Azure should be able to answer this question straight away. You will use Azure policies in this case. Let's head to Azure portal and understand the two policies that you can use to implement the given requirement. So friends, we are now in Azure portal in the policy definitions. Let's explore first policy, which is allowed locations as that will help you in implementing the first requirement that is only allow the creation of the virtual machines in specific regions. Now there is a policy for allowed locations for resource group. We are not going to talk about this at this stage because that is pretty much specific to resource groups. We will talk about the global one, which is allowed location. Now, if you read the description of this policy, it says this policy enables you to restrict the locations your organization can specify when deploying resources used to enforce your geo compliance requirements. It excludes resource group as we have already seen that there is a separate policy to restrict the resource group creation to certain locations. So friends, this policy is global and not just limited to virtual machines. You can restrict the creation of any resource to the given locations using this policy. Now let's look at another policy, which is more focused around the second requirement, uh, which was only allow the creation of specific sizes of virtual machines. So friends, you can see there is a policy named allowed virtual machine size SKUs. If you open it, the description says the policy enables you to specify a set of virtual machine size SKUs that your organization can deploy. So this is what our question was pretty much focused on. So we already have inbuilt policies in Azure to implement both of the requirements that were in our question. And even if the policy was not there, you can always go ahead and create a custom policy. Question number 48, you plan to deploy an Azure app service web app that will have multiple instances across multiple Azure regions. You need to recommend a load balancing service for the planned deployment. The solution must meet the following requirements. Maintain access to the app in the event of a regional outage. Support Azure web application firewall. Support cookie based affinity. Support URL routing. What should you include in the recommendation? Your options are Azure front door, Azure traffic manager, Azure Application Gateway, Azure Load Balancer. Folks, you should include Azure Front Door in your recommendation. Azure Front Door is a global load balancer with instant failover capabilities, so it will maintain access to the app in the event of regional outage. It supports Azure Web Application Firewall integration for security and also supports cookie-based affinity for session stickiness. It also has support for URL routing for directing traffic to different backend pools based on URL patterns. Next question, friends. You are designing a microservices architecture that will support a web application. The solution must meet the following requirements. Deploy the solution on-premise and to Azure. Support low latency and hyperscale operations. Allow independent upgrades to each microservice. Set policies for performing automatic repairs to the microservices. You need to recommend a technology. What should you recommend? Your options are Azure Container Instance, 
Azure Logic App, Azure Service Fabric, Azure Virtual Machine Scale Set. And folks, you should include Azure Service Fabric in the recommendation. Now, Azure Service Fabric is a distributed systems platform that makes it easy to package, deploy, and manage scalable and reliable microservices and containers. It supports deployment to both on-premise and to Azure, providing a consistent platform for managing and deploying microservices. It enables low latency and hyperscale operations as it is designed for building scalable and reliable applications. It allows independent upgrades to each microservice as it supports versioning and rolling upgrades. It also provides built-in health monitoring and automatic repairs for the microservices with configurable policies. 50th question of the series. You plan to automate the deployment of resources to Azure subscription. What is the difference between using Azure Blueprints and Azure Resource Manager templates? Your options are ARM templates remain connected to the deployed resources. Only Blueprints can contain policy definitions. Only ARM templates can contain policy definitions. Blueprint remain connected to the deployed resources. Folks, the Blueprint preserves the relationship between the deployed application and the Blueprint components. Whereas in the case of the ARM template, there remains no active relationship between your deployed application and template. This connection helps in tracking and auditing the resources. Folks, there is a link on your screen. Go through the link to understand more about the differences between the ARM templates and blueprints. So folks, that's all for this part of the series. If you have liked the content, do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe the channel. I'll be back soon with more such questions in our AZ305 exam practice question series, friends.